Hello, everybody. I'm live, and I'm going to do a live stream uh, new pickups thing. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we're going to do. So, folks that tune in uh, can interact with uh, what's going on. And um, I've got quite a few things to go over, so I figured this would be better than just doing a regular video. And maybe cheating a little bit. I don't know. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Um, if anybody watches, uh, <laughs> which I'm kind of, I'm kind of letting whatever people get notified that want to tune in before I get down to the nitty gritty, the nitty gritty of what we're doing. Uh, I'm not sure about that glare back there. I'm going to adjust this just a touch. So. Anyway, well, I'm going to go and get started. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go through some recent um, recent pickups, uh, and there's quite a few uh, over the last uh, while. And I don't know. I'm just I don't want all of my regular channel videos to just be new new finds. So um, I'm going to go through them and maybe talk a little bit about them. And if if people join in and and come on board. Uh, they can comment and, and interact, but um, at the end of the day, the video will go live, so folks that aren't watching live can just watch the video, and, and then that'll be that. So, got the little stack here. This is uh, a few recent sort of pickup things that, uh, that I grabbed. Uh, these are the uh, Michael Nesmith. Uh, First National Band reissues on colored vinyl from Sundays uh, with the cool, um, and my autofocus, I'm sorry guys, it's just a pain in the neck. But um, anyway, uh, that the, the first one was colored vinyl, uh, and then we've got Blue Salute on red vinyl, appropriately so, and then Nevada Fighter is on. You guessed it, white vinyl. It was funny when they announced these releases, um, they were going to, um, they had this one scheduled to be on yellow vinyl, which made no sense whatsoever. But I think somebody listened. These three are really good. They're, they're cut by Kevin Gray. So they're definitely an upgrade from the original RCAs. Uh, and so certainly worth, certainly worth anyone's time um, on that. So uh, let's see. All right. Uh, so moving along, I kind of went through uh, just my discogs to, to talk about, you know, recent stuff. And that's what I'm looking at over here on the computer. And um, I think the last video I did was the uh, record show in Greenville where, where I got quite a few things. And so I kind of picked up the, the stuff that, that was... Uh, just since then up to uh, today. So different stuff. I'm going to show this guy. This is a uh, Neil Young, Tonight's the Night. Uh, an album I did not have. Uh, I know that the recent reissue is kind of the way to go, but um, this is in pretty decent shape. The record is is really, really clean. Um, the problem with this record is the jackets. Um, tend to be pretty pretty rough, and this one's not perfect by no means. It's it's better than a lot. A lot of them they're really kind of ripped up here at the top, ring wear and stuff like that. Uh, and so this one, this one, um, better than most. Um, the the main thing is the vinyl plays really really well. So it's a good, nice, quiet um, version. This is an album that I've had on CD for quite a while. Uh, and I talked about it, I think, on a daily record. But um, this is Alex Chilton, A Man Called Destruction. Most of you know Alex Chilton uh, as one of the main guys in Big Star. Um, kind of went on to um, do different stuff uh, solo-wise until he passed away a few years ago. But uh, this was an album he recorded in Memphis. This is on blue vinyl. And uh, had quite a few... Um, Memphis players on it, and uh, it's kind of a, a 
a rock and roll effort from Alex in the mid nineties. And so, uh, I talk about it on the daily records channel. So there's your plug. So go over there if you want more sort of a review, this is on uh, omnivore records. Omnivore has done a great job at putting out, um, big star and big star related material. And so, uh, this one's no exception. Uh, so cool to have that on vinyl. Here's another uh, little trio of reissues that uh, was kind of stoked to get. Most of you know, if you follow my channel at all, uh, that I'm a big, um, been kind of on the search for XTC stuff this year. And so um, these recent XTC reissues, uh, Skylarking is this one, uh, 200 gram vinyl. Uh, this one actually has Dear God and uh, Mermaid Smile, which, um, and then these later XTC albums, when it was just um, Andy and, and Colin, uh, they are, um, of course, this is, uh, this is Apple Venus Volume 1, uh, which you really just can't find on vinyl. And despite what Brian Lozo may say, that's not Gene Simmons. Uh, <laughs> this is the... Wasp Star, uh, this is Wasp Star, uh, Apple Venus Volume 2, which is um, kind of the last regular album that, that uh, they did uh, with recent. These two, um, really, really, it's a shame. They're, they're kind of very underrated albums because um, I think they're probably a couple of the most sort of accomplished um, releases under the XTC name, uh, and, and so they're very nice, uh, really solid, solid songs, uh, just a really, really good collection of material, and so, I mean, XTC fans, definitely, you want, you want those albums, and so they're really good pressings, they're quiet, uh, they're supposedly, uh, uh, supervised by Andy Partridge, uh, so they, they sound really good, really good dynamic sounding pressings, quiet, um, I don't know if they're 200 grams. They, they may or may not be. I, I don't know. But, um, but really, really, um, really worth, worth seeking out. This is one I uh, picked up uh, at kind of a, a, I won't say a yard sale. It was like a community event. Uh, East West by the Butterfield Blues Band, Paul Butterfield. Uh, of course, this album uh, features the great Mike Bloomfield. Uh, on board uh, with this album as well as Elvin Bishop. Uh, so, uh, really a really a good record. Um, not a whole lot to say. So I mean, you know, sixty, I think sixty six, sixty seven when this album came out. One of the things of note for this album for me uh, is their version of uh, Mary Mary. My monkeys fans know Mary Mary, but uh, written by Michael Nesmith. Um, so this is um, a later pressing. It's not an original, but uh, plays pretty good. So the time. Uh, this is the time self-titled on Warner Brothers. Let me show you that. I'm not gonna pull it out, but uh, but yeah. Um, still, I got the record bar sticker on it <laughs> but uh a lot of people know that this is the album that features jimmy jam and terry lewis who later went on to have several hits with uh, janet jackson um you know this is um prince fans uh forever linked morris day will be forever linked with with prince and understandably so prince had a lot to do with those early time records this is one I featured on Daily Records. Uh, I believe I featured on Daily Records, but uh, recent pickup. This was uh, a thrift store find. Um, Have Twanging Guitar, Will Travel by Dwayne Eddy. Of course, uh, Dwayne Eddy, the Lee Hazelwood. This was his first album. Lee Hazelwood produced it and co-wrote most of the songs. But this this album had quite a few instrumental hits. Of course, a lot of people know uh, Dwayne Eddy for the Twanging Guitar sound. Rebel Rouser um, and... and you know those those that type of stuff um so good instrumental rock and this is a really nice mono clean copy so here's a newer album uh for people that think i only buy old music um not true uh the lemon twigs uh, i don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the lemon t twigs i don't know who's watching and no one's commenting i don't think they are 
Yeah, I don't see anybody commenting. Uh, Lemon Twigs, Go to School. Uh, kind of a concept album. Lemon Twigs is a duo of brothers, young brothers from uh, New York. And they, um, they've put out a few LPs now. Uh, fans of Beach Boys, Beatles, stuff that I like uh, will find this stuff quite interesting. This album is of note because it features, and it says so on the hype sticker, uh, Todd Rundgren and um, Jody Stevens of Big Star. Uh, so just a uh, solid pop music, uh, really, really, really good stuff. Th these guys, uh, it's like you took, uh, two dudes in 1977 and stuck them in a time capsule and then it hatched it open and they just making records, but, uh, really talented, uh, guys, very quirky, interesting, uh, good stuff. A musical by the Lemon Twigs, uh, go to school. So... So I don't know who's watching, no one's commenting, but this is one some folks have asked about. Uh, if do, do I have it? Do I have it? Do I have it? The answer now is yes, I do have it. This is the double LP version of Secret Messages by uh, Electric Light Orchestra uh, from We Are Vinyl. Uh, kind of cool on this epic label, uh, kind of throwback label there. Uh, but this is... Um, for those that know the story, this was uh, supposed to be a double LP. Uh, ELO's commercial fortunes starting to, to wane a little bit. And so this is the double, supposedly as Jeff Lynne originally intended back in 1983. A uh, couple of hits on this album, uh, Four Little Diamonds and Rock and Roll is King. Uh, there's some bonus tracks uh, that, that are on there. Uh, curiously enough, there's a... a sort of famous ELO outtake song called Beatles Forever uh, that was supposed to be on this album and it was not included on this 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 particular release. Uh, but it sounds really good. It's cool to have. Um, as an ELO fan, uh, I, I recommend it. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think Secret Message is, is probably a bit underrated. I, I can't say that this double version... Uh, completes like an untold story. I, you know, I, I mean, let me just be honest here. Um, Secret Messages was never going to be um, Smile or, or something along those lines. Uh, it's good pop music uh, like Jeff Lynne was known to do. Uh, so it, it's good. I, I don't know that I can say, well, I prefer this one to the, to the other one because I like the songs. Uh, I don't know that it necessarily adds to the uh, i don't know if the if the extra record adds to any anything um, no one's commenting i i wish whoever's watching would say hello <laughs> i've been just rattling on uh and so i don't know um i'm gonna move these over so i can grab them a little easier these are some uh recent goodwill thrift store pickups so i'm going to kind of move through these kind of quickly stan kenton's greatest hits i'm a big fan of stan kenton's jazz music these are later capital pressings uh i want to say yeah master by capital there's a wally on side two wally Trogett, and this one is uh j-a-m on side so it's a mi mismatch of plates but um it's in great shape and for goodwill and then another one of these, uh, Stan Kenton's Artistry in Rhythm, which I haven't spun yet. Same thing, yellow capital label. Mastered by Capital, um, JRM, JM, uh, and JM on this side. So this is probably, a, at least it's a matched up one. So somebody dropped out on me. Uh, thrift Store, fine. I love the Mercury Living Presence. This is Ravel Bolero. Just a nice clean copy. Nothing, nothing to, you know, nothing to jump up and down about, but it'd be a good record to spin. This one I haven't spun yet and kind of excited to do so. Billy Strange, a railroad man, 12 string guitar. Um, the songs, the sounds, and Soul of the Railroad on GMP Crescendo. But um uh, yeah, thrift store fine. Not really a. And then finally, in this little stack that we're going through, uh, the new Elvis Costello and the Imposters, 
Look Now, which I talked about, I think, yesterday on Daily Records. Really, really good record. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, some Burt Bacharach uh, collaborations here. Uh, recorded on the heel of the Imperial Bedroom Tour. So fans of the Burt Bacharach, Elvis Costello stuff, um, Imperial Bedroom, this is this is a, a good album. I, I, you know, and I didn't say this in, in Daily Records, and I, I guess it's worth saying here since I'm bringing it up. Um, this is more more poppy than than those records, if if that's believable. It's not quite as lush, but uh, there's a good little soul bent on on a lot of the songs. The songs have a little little soul to them. So there is that. I'm wondering is is the comments are, are people unable to comment? I'm wondering if comments are like disabled. Hey, there's somebody. Az Mick. Okay, Az Mick. Very good. Uh, East West. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so good. So comments are working, and I don't know. I can't see who's in here. So if if I don't, I can't address you unless you say something. So please speak up if you're in here. So those are kind of the the recent recent pickups. Uh, Good, AZ Mick. Glad. Glad you're here. Um, those are sort of recent pickups. Now, that leads us to today. Um, and yesterday, while I was at work, uh, my wife uh, sent me a uh, thing about an estate sale. I usually don't do estate sales or garage sales. It just, uh, you got to get up early. It's, it's just, I don't know. And then I always have this, this fear that, I'm going to have to fight people off and, and all this stuff, which, you know, and so she sent me this picture, uh, posted somewhere like on a Craigslist ad or something like that. I'm having a, uh, a state sale inside this, this little apartment and, you know, starts at 7 a.m. So we got up early this morning and I thought, what the heck, why not? It's worth a shot. I might find some stuff. So we got there about five after seven and, um, and so yeah, not sure what to find. Um, there was a guy that beat me there this morning. The the thing that piqued my interest was uh, they said to add Beatles, and and I'm kind of when it comes to shopping Beatles records. I was talking to my friend Sean in New Orleans. Hi Sean, uh, about how we just don't look at Beatles records anymore like we used to because we've got them and just how many of those can you have? But there you're always looking to fill in some gaps. Uh, and so if you can do that, uh, that's, that's always kind of cool. Uh, so we got in there and, and the nice thing was it wasn't a whole lot of records. It wasn't like a big, huge collection of, of LPs, but there was, um, they were all in really, really good shape and they, they weren't asking a whole lot for them. So, um, and the person, whoever this was, was obviously a huge Beatles fan because there was a lot of Beatles. Now, the guy in front of me, I kind of was able to see, he had a huge stack, um, looked like mostly solo Beatles stuff, and it would have been nice to get a hold of a couple of them um, uh, just because they they are, uh, just some, to fill in some holes. There's some solo stuff that I need, and so, and, and, you, and you usually don't see a lot of 70s and 80s uh, rock and roll records that are in decent shape and so somebody took care of them so I'm gonna kind of go through and show you I didn't I didn't just grab like a ton of stuff I found some some nice stuff and there's one thing in particular that's gonna be sort of the crown jewel of everything uh, and so I'm gonna save that for the end because you know that's what you do but the one of the things were some buttons and so there was this button, the backbone of rock and roll, which I, I don't know what this was in relation to, but it was pretty pretty funny, I thought. And I said, well, you know, why not? Uh, and so there was also a John Lennon gift piece of chance button that I grabbed, and I can't find it now. Um, I don't know if it fell out or if I dropped it in the parking lot when I was leaving. I, I don't know where it is, so it could be anywhere. Uh, one of the other things that I got, uh, something I didn't really need, um, of course, you don't, what do you really need? Of course, that's a good philosophical question. But I saw it, and I liked it, and I thought it was kind of cool. 
Um, like I said, this person, big Beatles fan, obviously um, had quite a bit of Beatles stuff. This was uh, a poster rolled up in this uh, plastic. Doesn't like it's ever been hung, so I'm going to be very careful kind of unrolling it here for you guys. But it is a poster with the butcher cover. It's got the Capitol Records logo down at the bottom, and it says Incredible at the top. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I thought it was cool. Um, so I grabbed it. I might frame it up and. I mean, maybe it's a. I, I mean, my Beatles people can tell me maybe it's a. It was a, it was an advert that uh, Capital did, and as we all know, the story of the history of the Butcher albums. Uh, hey, thanks, Az Mick. Thanks for tuning in and uh, have fun. Uh, I, I've got some stuff, so come back when the video is uploaded, and you can see the rest of it because there's some good stuff that, that you haven't seen, but. Uh, Anyway, so that was one thing. And then another thing I was really stoked to kind of get my hands on um, was this. They had a copy of uh, Tune In, the uh, Mark Lewis and book, uh, volume one, all these years. Uh, so I, I know Lewis is kind of the, the guy, and I think this was this this was the uh, this was the uh, the book that um, a lot of Beatles fans have been waiting for. Lewis has sort of been the the biographer, uh, and anyway, cool, cool thing to have. So let's get to what we're talking about, the records, and uh, and get down to the nitty-gritty. I've not uh, cleaned these or done anything with them. I just have, have brought them down to show you guys. And so the first one, uh, Harry Nilsson's Greatest Hits, um, which I've got all these Nilsson records, uh, but I didn't have this particular compilation. Um, and it's just a hodgepodge of, of stuff on the RCA label. Sean and I were talking about this earlier. Um, I think this came out in 77, 78, uh, right after, you know, Elvis died. Uh, of course, RCA was spending a lot of its time on Elvis, but, eh, you know, good songs. You can't, can't go wrong with, with Nelson there this next one's actually for sean i've got a copy of this but i saw it and knew that he needed one and uh it's in really good shape and so excitable boy by warren zavon which i talk about this album on daily records i'm not gonna pull it all the way out but this is in really nice shape and so that's for sean This one's still in shrink. Uh, it's a Columbia House issue. I just now noticed that, looking at it. Don Henley, Building the Perfect Beast. This is the one with uh, Boys of Summer on it. Um, so, in nice shape. Really clean. I said, I've not cleaned these yet or anything, so... Somebody, uh, whoever these were, uh, they took really nice care of the records. Uh, here's a Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, you're going to get it. Um, still in shrink wrap. So. I don't even think I looked at. I don't even think I looked at some of these because they were just in good shape, and I thought, you know what? I'm looking at the dead wax here. Mastered by Capital. Hmm. There's a lot of marking in this dead wax. Master by Capital on both sides. So, I mean, it's clean. Looks like a, a decent pressing, so. It's not one of the better or more regarded uh, albums from, from Tom Petty, but. 
But for cheap, nah, I can't get it back in there. I'm not going to fool with it because I don't keep them in there anyway. So here's the good stuff I'm, I'm really kind of excited about uh, what ended up being sort of the good finds. Uh, here is a John Lennon and Yoko Ono uh, double fantasy. Uh, still in shrink. Um, you can see the hype sticker still up there, which is kind of cool. Focus, focus, focus. This, of course, was the last album that, that would come out. This is a Winchester. There's Sterling in the Dead Wax. Yep. So, who's that guy? <clears throat> I have a double fantasy, but it's not in the best shape. So, and then of course I got this, the uh, shaved fish, collectible linen. This was the um, sort of collection of. Uh, Odds and sides. This is a purple capital label. Winchester. Really clean. Um, it's not a not a Wally or anything like that. But uh, anyway. All right. So now for the crown jewel, everything that we're leading up to in this video. So I'm going to make some room here so I can show it to you guys. <laughs> and it looks like no one's watching, so maybe you guys will all watch it um, in the meantime. So um, to all my Beatle people, pay attention. I got the wedding album. This um, box, uh, a lot of people know it's the John Lennon and Yoko Ono uh, celebration of their wedding. EMI, Odeon, box, eh, you know, it's not perfect, uh, but it's got a good little ding up here in the corner, a little bend in it, um, but what do you say, but the big thing is, and I don't know if, the, you know, I'm not as familiar, but that's, that's EMI uh, Japan, made in Japan, so I don't know if that makes a difference, so I'm going to open it up and show you guys the contents. So there's the front, and of course inside, kind of stuck to the uh, inner inside of the box, is the uh, is the marriage certificate for John and Yoko. My focus will tune in. Sorry about the autofocus. Come on, guys, autofocus. More like out of focus. So there's that. Uh, there was a lot of uh, goodies in the box. Here's a postcard uh, with John and Yoko. And I'm assuming this is everything. It's a complete box. So you guys let me know um, if, if I'm missing anything. There's a photo strip of John and Yoko. There is this insert... Um, in, in Japanese. And I'm thinking this is a later pressing because based on the insert here, it's got um, sometime in New York, Mind Games, a little advert there on the side. So probably not an original. Um, so... The wedding cake. Here's a piece of cake for you. Uh, there's a book here, um, a black book called The Press. Focus up. Uh, and this is just a collection of news clippings about John and Yoko. I'm not going to go through each page, but. Some of the cartoons. There's that. There's this. I've not actually pulled it out. The wedding. 
but it looks like it's a fold-out poster of them the wedding day. I'm going to pull out and show you guys if you can see it on both sides. Quite, quite interesting. Carefully, pull this back up. There's this little poster insert, which is um, drawing drawings by John. You guys are getting the full effect here. And last and certainly not least, the album itself, which is a nice gatefold. Pull the album out here and show you guys. The album is really clean, and I can imagine why. Because I mean, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's terrible, but uh, I'm sure no one wanted to listen to this. I think it's more of a collectible, you know, kind of piece. Um, I've not looked on Discogs or anything, so I don't know a whole lot about the, the pressing. Um, you know what it what it may be. Um, and I'm assuming it's got all of the uh, the stuff with it that, that's supposed to come packaged inside of it. So if you're watching and you, you, you can say, yeah, that looks like everything. Or you can say, oh, you're missing a blah, blah, blah. You know, for what I, what I gave for it, um, which was far less than what I've seen this for and you, you don't see it out in the wild so there it is um, but really cool really cool find really cool to have so um, I'll spin it I'll give it a give it a listen I mean you know it'll get played at least once with me so since no one's tuned in uh, and everything I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing and go about my day uh but it will be uploaded for you to watch and it's only half an hour so i figured that's that's pretty good considering uh so much stuff we went through oh my goodness i did miss a couple of things as always i forgot there's a little stack right here so here's the bonus stuff i got a copy of of jailbreak another copy those of you that have been following my thin lizzie this is the one i got at the record show but i found a GK Gilbert Kong uh, press. I'm not a beat them, but I've heard that the Gilbert Kong is is preferable. The jacket, uh, one of the jackets is nice, so I'm kind of going to make a Frankenstein of the jacket. But uh, love that album. This thing was next to nothing. It was cheap. Uh, Let There Be Rock by ACDC. Um, Atco label. Uh, DK. I'm, I'm confused by it because it's a yellow Atco, but, I mean, this is clearly a later sleeve, so I don't know what the story is on that. Um, yes. Um, time, and this is a uh, Monarch pressing on that, so. Atlantic Monarch, so. Here's that. And... I think that's that's it. That covers all the bases. So we kept it under 35 minutes. So those of you that are not tuned in can um, can go back and watch. I'm going to leave this up, and, and you can go and look at it. And I'm going to clean autofocus. I'm going to clean and listen, uh, listen to some records. So thanks for tuning in and watching. And um, go check out Daily Records, all that good stuff. Comment down there. Um, you know the drill. Uh, and... Tommy Burton 75, Instagram and Twitter. Um, it's a good feed. So I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.